the live uh, song for us which we'll share with you later uh, but I started by talking to Harrison it's Harrison, William and Brandon and uh, you're going to hear from Harrison first who tells us how it was that they got together We formed oh, like five years ago and we was uh, we, for a long time we was all interested in the same type of music and uh, listening to the same type of music on, on the way to schools and stuff like that I think one, one of our teachers during high school they came to us and they were just asking about um, what instruments do you guys play? Was you interested in playing an instrument? And thankfully, we all chose separate instruments. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, did you, when you all sort of met five years ago and realised that you had this similar interest in music? Yeah. Did you all already play an instrument? We we were playing instrument for a little bit before we formed the band, yeah, because uh, our teachers like got us together and thought, right, you should do this as a thing. So then we started getting more passionate about it and getting into doing it. But uh, originally, uh, we were just playing beforehand before we actually got together as a band. So there's you, Harrison, there's William, there's uh, there's, there's Brandon. Um, tell us what instruments you all play then. Harrison, let's so start I play, with you. I play guitar and I do um, lead, lead vocals. Okay. And I played the drums. He said just play the drums. That's well important. <laughs> play, yeah. That's really, and really he does, important. He just, and just sing <laughs> and play the harmonica as well. So. Oh, yeah. there you go. Multi-talented. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into to drumming then? High school, really. So I started listening to drum drum soul music mm -hmm. before. And then one, when I started high school, my drum teacher, he was like, you have a good feel for it. Even though I couldn't right. play at the time, he said, oh, you have a good feel and your heart's there. Why don't we start you up on some lessons? And over time, I just got more open to it. So did you start out on a proper drum kit then at school? Uh, yeah, I did do, yeah. Right, and um, how did you find it? Did you feel like you picked it up straight away or...? Uh, yeah, I feel um, I was very comfortable <laughs> <laughs> playing it. Yeah, because yeah. I've I've got an electric drum kit at home. Um, mm. I've only had it for about six months, um, so I, I've just got just got started with it. Oh, but right, yeah. I tried a few instruments before, and it's just not been mm. for me. But the, the drums, I've loved it. I've really really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And so, what about you, William? What what do you uh, play? I play the bass. I did start out learning the guitar first. I think it was like year seven the first time I picked up a guitar, and then I eventually made the transition over to the bass after many people telling me that I'd be better on bass because I'll be honest I'm not the greatest guitarist. Well tell us then <laughs> the difference because musicians of course will know this but there'll be a lot of people who know you know they've heard of bass guitar yeah. and so on but they might not know the difference between lead guitar and bass guitar and so on so tell us what the difference is. The one difference that stands out is it's got two less strings than a guitar it's also a lot deeper so um it's also a lot more about feel and rhythm and you need to link in with the drums a lot more than you do with on a guitar. Like the guitar can play pretty much anything, but it's the bass that brings in that rhythmic drums and then brings it into the melodic guitar. And without it in the background, you sort of, it, it sounds a bit disjunct without it, so. So it's a pretty difficult instrument. I mean, all dif instruments are difficult, but that, I guess, you're really collaborative, aren't you, with, with, with everybody else. What was that transition like for you onto bass guitar? For me, it sort of just connected instantly. When I first started playing the bass, it was like, th this is what I'm supposed to be playing. I'm not supposed to be on a guitar. I'm not supposed to be doing anything else. I'm supposed to be on a bass. And it just sort of flowed very well in my learning process on it. That's brilliant. Um, so, Harrison, you were saying that you yeah. know you, your teachers kind of brought you together. You all had this love uh, for music. Then it turns out when you're asked to play instruments, oh... Conveniently, we all play different yeah, ones that, yeah. that work to, uh, together well uh, as a band. So, how did you then come together and start playing music together? We we got together and we we was just doing covers at first, and uh, we played in a few like just a few little gigs around school and stuff like that. About time school ended, we um, we decided right well we we've got like the general aspect together of sounding good in a band, and then we decided right well we need to start writing some music. And I was the first person to uh, bring some music to the table and be like, "Oh, I've wrote this song and it sounded good." And from there, it was it was just electric, really, with like what we was doing, and it just fit together well. And you know, we sort of played off each other like we knew what was going to happen, and we we developed our sound around it. We're still really developing our sound anyway. So you started off doing covers. Yeah. Um, so you said that you all had a similar taste in music, Brandon. What? What genre did you start off sort of covering? Uh, I started off covering in indie stuff and just soft, like say Oasis, um, as in like Supersonic. And it must 
be so exciting when you've learnt something yeah. on any instrument from start to finish and you, you, you can actually do it. Yeah. Where did you all uh, start performing, William? Well, we we started our performance mainly in high school. Mm -hmm. the, that first time we went into a band practice was in one of the classrooms at high school. And I just remember the first time. It probably wasn't as well as we wanted it to go. We sort of... We, it wasn't an immediate connection right at the start, but about 20 minutes in, it was on the, like, nailed the coffin on the head. It so was did amazing. you play for, uh, sort of, your, your peers, the other yeah. students at school? What was that like? Because sometimes, I guess it can be easier to play for total strangers than people who are your mates in school every day. What was that like? Because they were the mates, they had like a tough opinion on it. So <laughs> I would say it's a lot easier to play in front of a crowd of strangers <laughs> than it is your mates. Absolutely is. Well, it's 20 past 11, thanks to the Colton's band. There's more to come from them. We had a top time, loads of laughs, loads of exploring, and just a brilliant time with my mate Johnny, who's as daft and silly as me. So we laughed and laughed and laughed, which was just ace. Absolutely brilliant. Got to loads of mischief and just had a top time. Bring on more adventures, I say, but really glad to be back with you uh, this evening. So thank you so much for welcoming me back. Your messages mean a great deal. They really, really do. Thank you so much um, for those. Uh, my special guest this evening, you heard a little bit from before, the Colton's Band. They're a three-piece indie rock band. They're just 17 years old. They've been together for five years, as you were hearing earlier. They're all at Music College together and they've got big ambitions. They did start out just doing covers and they learnt all the songs and they learnt how to sort of, you know, work together and play their instruments and fit together. Um, but then they've started writing their own songs. Uh, so I asked Harrison, the Harrison, William and Brandon, and I asked Harrison how it was that he started to write his own songs for the band. About time that time came around, we was quite comfortable with each other to the point that obviously I could just, I could play a song and it, it, would, be, it would be fine for them to listen to. And what was good was like, we understood what we'd be able to do mm. we understood like oh I'll play the drums this way because obviously we've been listening to the same music and we've been covering the same songs so we understood like how the song wanted to be even though I was just playing it on acoustic Brandon would know how to play the drums towards the, the, the sound that I wanted it to be so how does that creative writing process happen for, for all of you are you all part of it is it do you do the majority of it, Harrison, and, and then you two back it up? How does it work? Normally it works with the same as instruments we play. So William will write the bass line towards what I'm doing. And I'll normally come in with an acoustic song with vocals. And I'll, I'll normally be the main lyricist. Sometimes William helps. And, um, yeah, and then Brandon will develop the, the drum line around that, depending on how he wants to go with it. And it all sort of just tampers the feel a bit differently. So how difficult is it, that writing process together? I mean, Brandon, for, for you to, mm. do you know what I mean, know what to do on drums to complement yeah. it, how, how difficult is that, or, or yeah. is it? Well, uh, as Will previously mentioned, um, uh, drum and bass, uh, drums and bass, mm -hmm. uh, both in the rhythmic section, um, Harrison will come up with an acoustic idea, as you said, and then Will with a bass line. And because we're both in the rhythmic family you can kind of do it together know, so to speak mm. i play you know to complement the bass line and then obviously the melody gets together and whatnot. so what's your inspiration you I mean you just said you're the main lyricist and sometimes william helps uh, but harrison where does that inspiration come from and what do you tend to write about uh so i mean like you say the inspiration it it, it comes from it, i think it comes from a lot of different aspects sometimes I go down the route of just writing a a story about something that's fictional or something that I'm not involved in, and then sometimes it's about my own personal views and things that I've like had experiences with. I'll write about, and that that's not where it comes from. The the as a society, like the the feel for the music and the sound, like we get a lot of inspiration from a lot of different artists that are mixed together. If Williams listens to something different compared to what I'm listening to. William would be able to add that sort of aspect of what he's been listening to to, to me. So it, it all gets conjunctured mm. into one, really, depending on what we're listening to. You see, we had um, a solo musician on a few weeks ago who's so young, like yourselves. You're all 17, aren't you? And he was uh, young and, and solo. And I said, have you, have you been part of a band? And he said, yeah, but I really didn't like it because I'd come to the group with these ideas and they'd be like, oh, I don't like this, don't like that. He said, I just couldn't get anything done. So I thought, Do you know what, better off doing it on my own. What is it that makes you enjoy that band environment, Will? And what makes it work when it does work? 
collaborating with others? I feel like it's the fact that we've all known each other for quite a while that it works so well. We all know what each other expects the other person to to do and like to bring to the table. So um, say like Harrison does bring an idea, he sort of knows that this idea will work with what the other two will come up with. So he, he writes many songs, he's wrote a load of songs, but not all of them get like to the stage where they're ready to be performed live. Some of them will get redone at a later mm. date. So yeah. we have come back to songs that we've worked on in the past and we're like, I've got a new idea for this song. This is how I'd now do the song. And, and sometimes that's worked. really helpful, isn't it? Going away from it and coming back to it because you, yeah. you're sort of pounding yeah. your head and you don't get any further. Uh, Brandon, whereabouts are you all playing now then? What types of, of gigs are you doing live? Uh, yeah, we, we play uh, live in Manchester mainly for now. I mean, further down the line, we'll start looking at venues outside you know, on the outskirts. It must be difficult because you're not technically old enough to be in pubs yet even, are you? No, that's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. There's, a, there's <laughs> definitely a, an aspect to it where we can't really do much like that. But but isn't it great starting yeah. out this young where you, you know, you've already been together five years, you're developing all the skills that you need to be in front of different types of audiences, understanding how each other works. You're doing that apprenticeship, if you like, yeah. aren't you, to yeah. get yourself ready for, for whatever might be next what what is it like William when you're all on stage together wherever the venue is in, in Manchester where, you, where you've been performing and are performing what's what's that like uh, for, for you personally to be on stage with your mates who you know really well doing what you love I can't really describe it because it's a it just sort of like it's, it's quite overwhelming because when you first walk out onto the stage and you hear people cheering for you and you know that they're there to see you and see you play and then when you start playing once you play that first note it's like it's, it's something that's unable to be described and then once everything clicks like after like the first two notes it's like a di it, you can't describe it <laughs> <laughs> but Brandon do you get nervous or is it just excited <clears throat> before you perform what's that like as you prepare um, because we've been playing since high school and mm. playing shows and whatnot I don't tend to get nervous but say an hour, two hours before the gig, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is great, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I'm proper buzzing. You've you know got to have I mean? that bit of adrenaline, I think, anyway, yeah. to perform at your best, haven't you? So Harrison, then, what are the goals for, for all of you? You're obviously <clears throat> ambitious, this is what you, you want to do. What, what are the goals yes. for the band? Yeah, so um, obviously we, we've only been releasing for a year, roughly just over a year now. So uh, we're looking at um, putting out another single, this upcoming year hopefully and um it's one of, i think i think it's one of our best songs yet and um a lot of people should be looking forward to it it is a great song yeah yeah, 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 yeah. where would you like to end up like what are the you know the, the big goals for you? Have, you have you talked about that have you got that in mind william that this you know this is what we want to achieve together yeah just massive just known all around yeah. the world i want to go to any country <laughs> and someone know who i am what would the be... dream gig be for you william I don't know. Any gig is a dream gig, really. To just have that opportunity to play in front of anyone, that's it's good enough for me. Okay, love it, Brandon. I think it's called Red Rocks. Okay, and it's in America. Go on then, Harrison. I don't know. Probably the festival, some of the bigger festivals, like mm. you know, Why Not Fest or Glastonbury. Something like, that. if we could ever get on something like, that. not even on like the the top supports, but just just like, to be part of it, yeah, on, like, mega it mega just, experience. It would be mega, yeah. And why not? It's doable. We had Seb Lowe on, of course, last year, a uh, young musician from Saddleworth who started his career playing music in his bedroom, putting it out on TikTok, got the opportunity and played at Glastonbury last year. And what a huge opportunity that was for him. And he's going from strength to strength. He's playing loads and loads of gigs now and he's getting more and more well-known and popular. So... You never know, it could be well on the cards for the Coltons and they certainly started the right way. You're going to hear more from them around the process and the creative writing process, how they came together and where they want to go and what their ambitions are. Um, and you're going to hear from them now. Uh, it's Harrison that's playing, of course. They didn't have drums and bass and everything with them, so he played uh, the song on solo guitar for us and uh, William and uh, Brandon were alongside him. But before we hear them perform their song, Harrison told me how they got the name, the Coltons. Uh, well, we're really looking forward uh, to hearing uh, you play uh, but before we do that tell us about the band name and where that came from Harrison so the, funnily enough there, there isn't a, an amazing story about it we, we were searching up like some different names for a while just thinking about like what we should actually call it because 
for a while what, what was we called for a while just like gr- yeah like group no like group a oh, like or something like that yeah. Yeah. i was gonna say did like you have a different a. name before it right yeah. group a yeah that yeah. sounds like a disease yeah so <laughs> <laughs> that's good that you moved on from that yeah. so what what got no, you to yeah, come up with the this Coltons, the Coltons. We, we well we was looking at like bands what we, it, it had like the something like the lars or like the the, the smiths it's just and, yeah, some, yeah. something along those lines mm-hmm. so, and then we was thinking of names after that so like obviously the smiths are the smith like smith so we thought like well i was thinking of it mainly and i was just like colton i, I don't even know where i came up with it. it's a name colton in it so mm-hmm. i was thinking of the coltons and yeah it just felt right it just felt right it just sort of clicked that's cool well i have got one final question uh, which again i'll give you all a chance to answer and I, I usually do tend to ask this to manchester artists because you know i think when you're from greater manchester you've, you've got that real sense of belonging and and pride if you like that, that we have and I'm sure other places have it but it's, it tends to be strong within uh, Mancunians and um, music is such a, a big part of of our city and yeah, our region definitely. what is it William that you think about Manchester that produces so much talent whether it's comedy art, sport, got a bit of everything but in your case music as a young person growing up now and having this passion for music, what is it about Greater Manchester that provides so much creativity and inspiration i guess it's just like when you're walking through manchester you'll see so many different things going on that you you're gonna have like a creative like epiphany that comes to your head like there's just so much going on that you're not going like you're going to want to be creative because of it and whether that be listening to an artist that came before you or looking at like a painter that's done something and then being inspired by that to do your own thing it's just there's a lot of like music and yeah there's a lot of inspiration to go off so it is the sources for it yeah yeah yeah, absolutely it's a great it's a great way to put it brandon yeah pretty much the same to be honest take market street for example you're walking down and you'll see someone beatboxing like at the top Mm -hmm. and then down near the bottom you'll see someone dancing and you know jigging about or whatever and there's people along there on market street and right across the city center who are doing that and mm. they're really really good like <laughs> yeah, super are. talented as well yeah, aren't yeah. they uh harrison i'll give yeah, you a chance so to I answer th- that I think finally it's just a it's just a drive we we have people throughout generations who are just driven to do what they want to do and we get it done and we get it done right and uh yeah i think people are following their dreams and there's a massive culture around people following their dreams we do things differently, as yeah. they say. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been such a pleasure to have you all in. So, Harrison, we're about to get a real treat and hear you play for yeah. us uh, live. Tell us the name of this song and, and what it's about. So, uh, this one's off our, our latest EP, and it's called 17. Going on from what I said before about writing songs, uh, this is one I wrote just about a story, a fictional story about a couple in America. Right, take it away. Just a body with 
very best of luck with everything that you're doing. It's it's just that exciting to see anybody, but particularly young people with big dreams and passions that they're following. I think it's a, a great thing, and and you yourselves are going to inspire lots of other people totally. as well. So yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I know you moved on to someone new. Hope life is beautiful.